Hello, and welcome to the first tutorial on the complete guide to Teleport. In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at three ways to install Teleport on Debian, on Red Hat, and through any other Linux operating system using curl. In the following tutorial, we'll look at Docker. So if you're looking at containers, jump to tutorial two. Let's get started. Throughout these tutorials and workshops, we'll be relying on the teleport documentation as much as possible. The teleport documentation is fantastic. And if you ever run into trouble, I recommend checking there first and then maybe follow up with a YouTube comment. Thanks. So let's start with Debian based distribution. We have here a tab for Debian with four commands. Now you'll see here that this relies on both curl and apt-add-repository. If these are not available on your Debian based distribution, you will have to run an apt update and an apt install curl and software dash properties dash common. This should make the tools required available. We're going to start by copying the curl command and dropping it onto our Debian machine. And because I'm running as a root user, I do not need the sudo at the start of the second command. This is going to import the GPG key that will allow us to consume the teleport repository in a secure fashion. Next, we're going to use the apt add repository helper to add the teleport repository to our system. And when we add the new repository with this helper, it will automatically run the apt update for us automatically. So we can actually skip the next line in the teleport documentation and go straight the apt install. Voila. We now have teleport installed on a Debian based distribution. Okay, let's take a look at the Red Hat version now. If we jump back over to the documentation and click on the Red Hat tab, we can see that we need access to the yum config manager to be able to add our teleport repository. To get that, you'll need to yum install yum dash utils. From there, we can copy this first command. And this will add our teleport repository to our yum configuration. Next, we do a yum install teleport We've had to click yes twice. Once to confirm we want to install Teleport, the second one to confirm that we wanted to import the key from that repository. Now the installation is running, and in just a moment's time, we will have Teleport installed on a Red Hat system. And that's it. Voila. So while I really appreciate the repositories provided for Debian distributions or Debian based distributions and Red Hat based distributions. Sometimes you just want to install it yourself. Or maybe you're just running another more esoteric distribution. In fact, I'm a pretty big fan of Arch. So let's take a look at how we can install Teleport without the package repositories. On the installation instructions, I've clicked on the ARM64 ARM V8 instructions. Now these aren't specific to ARM. However, they are highlighting that we can use curl commands to install Teleport. So I'm going to copy this first one, which downloads the SHA-256. This is the checksum for the binary that we are about to download. When I paste it though, I'm going to make a small change because this isn't an ARM64 machine. It is a standard AMD64 machine. However, because it's Arch Linux, we can't leverage those package repositories. So we're going to download that checksum. Next, we can copy the curl command for downloading the binary artifact. And again, we're going to replace ARM64 with AMD64. Now that we have the tarpaul downloaded, we can copy the shasum command to verify and validate that the checksum and the tarpaul match. This command is a slightly different on Arch Linux. The command is sha sum, sha 256 sum, and it doesn't need us to tell it the size. 
Oh, and we have to update the ARM64 to EMD64. I was bound to forget it once. What we can see here is that the SHA sum we downloaded here matches the SHA that we get on the tarball. That's exactly what we want. Lastly, we can extract our downloaded tarball. CD into the teleport directory and run the installation script. Voila, teleport installed on any Linux distribution using curl, something to check the chasms and one helper install script. Now that we've seen three different ways to install teleport, let's actually kick the tires on it and make sure it works. Without any configuration, we can run teleport start on any of these installations and get a teleport server running. Because there is no TLS configuration provided by me, the end user, it's going to generate some certs that may be considered insecure or unsafe by your browser. In the workshop coming up in just a few days time, you will see how to provision and use the built-in support for Let's Encrypt to get real X509 certificates that are trusted by all browsers. If you also get this screen, Chrome allows you to type, this is unsafe anywhere on the page and it will accept the untrusted certificate. And perfect. We now have a teleport login screen that will allow us to access this teleport service. But wait, we haven't created any users. We can add our first user from the Linux system by using the tctl command. The tctl command has a subcommand called users and a following subcommand called add. We can provide the name of the user that we wish to add. We're going to have to assign some roles and privileges to this user. Now you don't have to worry about this right now. We will cover this in a future tutorial and workshop. After adding a user, you will be presented with an ephemeral short-lived token that will allow you to register and create your first user. I have to change the container to localhost for this to work. Now we just have to set a password and configure 2FE. Teleport is secure by default and in fact cannot be misconfigured to not support 2FE. So you're going to want to use Google Authenticator, 1Password, Bitwarden, or even Authy. Whatever you want to use, you can configure. Teleport does support hardware tokens as a 2FA, and this will be covered in future sessions. One password provides support for scanning this QR code directly through the extension. And now we have created and logged in to our teleport server. So now that we have access, let's see what we can do with teleport. First, I'll zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit more legible. We start off on a server's screen. This lists all of the nodes which have a teleport agent running within your cluster. There is a connect button that when clicked allows you to SSH securely with auditing to any machine within the cluster. You have access to whatever users you are configured access to. If you remember when I ran a tctl users add command, I gave myself dash dash logins equals root. 
We haven't discussed user management yet, but we will do this soon in a future session. If I click connect as root, we get a web-based SSH terminal. From here, I can run commands. I can ask who I am, and I can look to see which other processes are running within the system. I'm going to click exit, and we'll let that go away. Now, we haven't configured this teleport with much more at the moment. So what I will say is that there is a lot coming when we look at application management, Kubernetes, and databases. Teleport provides primitive for securely managing with protocol awareness, access to Postgres, MongoDB, and more coming soon. It has first-class support for hooking into your Kubernetes system and giving people access to the clusters as required. You can also proxy any application running with any Kubernetes cluster or on any bare metal node, provided you can tell Teleport where that application is. You can distribute access to that as an ephemeral fashion or persistent giving people what they need access to in a really easy, simple fashion. What we can see just now in this unconfigured teleport though is activity and auditing. If I click on activity here and active sessions, you'll see that we don't actually have an active session right now. So let's just change that and open our new root session. So jump back over to here, click on active sessions and you can see the session is now listed here. We can see the ID, we can see the user and the IP address and the node that was accessed. And if I wanted, I could click the join the session to get a second tab typing in real time with my collaborator. If I move over here, you can see every single thing, even when I don't hit return, that is happening in this session. More importantly than that is we get full auditability of everything happening in this system. You can see when the user was created. You can see when sessions are started. You can click on it for more information to see which login was used and which user initiated the session. You can see when they disconnected, you can see when a session ends, and you can even see when a user joins an active session. There is a wealth of information here for the next time you have any risky situation. And my favorite feature, session recording. Teleport records all of the activity on the sessions, allowing you to play it back as if it were a movie, even though it's not. We can click play on a session here and see every command that I executed at the start of this demo. More than that, you can see that there's a slider that allows us to roll this back to whatever stage of the history we want. And one last thing. You can copy and paste anything from the recording. So that is my high level overview of Teleport. You've seen how to install Teleport on Debian, Red Hat and with Curl. You've seen how to start the server and create your first user. We've done a high level exploration of the user interface and discussed briefly some of the features we're going to be looking at in this course. Join us for our workshop. In just a few days time, we will be taking a look at all of these features in much more detail in a live hands-on fashion. We'll see you soon.